three wrestling podcast here uh, alongside Mike Grunier, Joel Lopez, I'm Ernest Fellas, what's up? You see, how he's back, you see how he's back from assignment and his 543 all merged together? Yes. You see that, Joe? Okay. I'm, yes. I'm, I missed it last week. I, 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 I'm sleepy right now, but we're powering through, baby. We're powering through. Uh, yeah, I'm back from the last week. Yes. I, I I missed you and your marbles last week. I'll be honest, you know. <laughs> you fuck you, man. <laughs> um, dude, straight up though, Joe, man, you killed us last week though. You killed it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, especially doing the watch along last week. I was I was watching that and fucking I kept I I had to stop drinking because I was fucking every time I was drinking something and you made a joke over the watch along. I had to almost choked my fucking do <laughs> <my> drink. <laughs> I don't think you understand. That was like a glass shattering moment for me, realizing why like male wrestlers are just not very attractive in the eighties. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what was it Dusty and Greg Valentine? Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, yo, like I finally understand it. That was amazing. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> of course, everybody you can find this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitch Radio, Google Podcasts, and of course Amazon Music now. Uh, fellas, before we get started our, with our topics today, our takes, uh, let's just spend a couple minutes real quick on this. Uh, we lost another legend this week in the world of professional les- wrestling. This is a big one here. Pat Patterson um, died at the age of 79 years old uh, this week. Um, he's actually local here in South Florida, too. I didn't even know that until, like, literally minutes we, we uh, rec- start recording. See, you know, one of the you know, first intercontinental champion, first openly gay wrestler. Um also, the creator and of the Royal Rumble, the, the greatest the, to me, the greatest pay per view of all time, <laughs> to the record. Um, Pat Patterson is definitely a trailblazer, one of the biggest, you know, most popular, you know, certainly wrestling legend, you know, and even past, even beyond his uh, wrestling days, was, you know, st- you know, being the influence in the locker room. You hear all these stories of everybody who, you know, past, present, and even now today, you know, people getting really, you know, emotional about. How much, how much impact he had on their on their lives, and you know, as, as far as you know, being in the industry or not. So definitely a, a big loss in the wrestling world. Uh, just want to get you guys thoughts on that quickly, Mike. Um, yeah, definitely a guy who had day to day input on a lot of guys' career coming up. Um, you know, a lot of the Canadian guys, Sammy, Evan, uh, both uh, members of Everrise, uh, Mantell and Parker all had, you know, the Canadian, you know, uh, love for, for Pat and what he's done for the, for the, uh, not only the company, but for Canadian wrestling as a whole. Um, he was a big guy that, you know, got a lot of those guys, uh, and had a lot of those guys backs. Um, you know, I listened to a very makeshift edition of something to wrestle with. I started it this morning. It came out late because, uh, Bruce called an audible to tell stories about, um, Pat this week, rather than talking about the Armageddon show that they were talking, they were going to talk about. Um, and just to hear, you know, the stories that I did get to hear before I had to go play baseball this morning. Um, and there's the, the amount of actual sadness that Bruce had in his voice, because it, not only did he lose someone that was, you know, close to him in the business, but he lost someone who was a really good friend of his. Um, I had the privilege of seeing uh, Pat at a um, something to wrestle live show in uh, sunrise at the Panther Stadium uh, after a Panthers game. And, you know, he worked really well with the two of those guys. Um, and who's to forget all the fun stuff that he did? Uh, hardcore champion, uh, part of the Stooges. Yeah, so, that was great. <laughs> he, even won, he won the 24-7-7-11 I-95 title, I think, at some point this year, too, or yeah, late, late last he did. year. Um, so it's, it's, it's one of those things where – even as things were not going as swimmingly for Pat, I feel like he had like more comfort in knowing that he was at wrestling. So it's it's a it's a sad thing. I'll always be forever uh, grateful that he came up with the Royal Rumble idea. Um, it's probably my second favorite match gimmick. Uh, so what's your first? I mean, the one we're going to talk about in a little while. Oh. Nice, nice little uh, tease there for the folks. So I'll say two things um, when thinking about Pat Patterson. Number one, 
it's kind of funny to me because I feel like, look, I've been a wrestling fan my entire life, pretty much. That goes back to like 1983, essentially. Obviously, I don't remember a lot from when I was a child, but it's interesting to me because Pat Patterson's one of those legends that I can't say I've ever seen a wrestling match of his. I mean, not when he was in his prime. Like, obviously, I've seen his work when he was one of the Stooges in the late 90s during the Attitude Era. But I've never actually sat down and watched Pat Patterson when he was doing whatever made him, you know, a true pro wrestling legend. So I think that's kind of interesting. I don't know if there's any of his matches are on the network. If they are, I think it'd be a nice little, you know, a nice little way to honor him. If maybe we all went out of our way and watched the Pat Patterson match, because I have a feeling most of us probably like me have not actually seen very many. Uh, the other thing that I'll say is obviously I'm an openly gay wrestling fan. So it's impossible to ignore the fact that, as you said, Pat Patterson, uh, an openly gay wrestler. I don't know how open he was during his actual in-ring career. Um, I know it's something that, you know, it, it might have been open to the other wrestlers and stuff. Certainly from stories that I've heard, it sounds that way. But it, it's definitely in the in the last, I think, like decade or so that really fans kind of had it confirmed and everything. And I think one of the coolest things about it is Obviously, pro wrestling can be a very um, misogynistic world, very, you know, very macho, all of that. Basically, Razor Ramon, just like, you know, he was he was the embodiment of pro wrestling. So I, I've always thought it was kind of cool that, like, when you do hear stories about Pat Patterson in really you know, th- related from other people who work closely with him and stuff, the fact that he was openly gay never comes across as a negative. It never comes across as something that people aren't accepting of, and I appreciate that. Obviously, they actually <laughs> mentioned that he actually mentions it in the uh, the episode. One of like the second stories that Bruce tells is that they went to a a gay bar. Yeah, and Bruce like backed himself up against like this wall or yes, whatever. Yes, yeah, I was listening to that also. Yeah, yeah. and and, and uh, friend, uh, I don't remember Pat's uh, partner's name off the top of my head. Yeah, yeah. But he was like, what, do you think that, like, someone's just going to walk up and fuck you? I don't think it works that way. I think they would well, have yeah, enough, enough courtesy to, straight, like, buy you a drink. Right. Every straight man assumes that every gay man wants them. And I promise you, that's not true. That's not the case. Not that's even a little. No. Yes. Uh, yeah, no. So it's just it's just funny that, like, that, that story was told. And then there was a story, like, shortly after it where, uh, who was it? Was it uh, Mad Dog with Sean? Uh, there was something, something like that. There, there, there was... Yeah, that, that was basically that basically was like, oh, I want to meet your partner and told both of them that if anyone gave them shit, they'd have to go through him. So yeah. it, even even back then, like knowing that people had each other's backs on that stuff is is a nice thing to hear, um, no, especially really, in a business, especially in a really business where is. not a lot of people have each other's back. Right. Exactly. No, it really is. It's a it's a great thing to have heard. And I bet. You know, as as we've obviously all heard lots of stories about Pat Patterson being a really just brilliant guy when it came to storytelling and, uh, you know, match finishes and stuff. It's one of the reasons why I say, like, it would be kind of fun to watch one of his old matches, because if he could come up with so many things for other workers and tell these great stories and stuff, he must have been awesome to watch in the ring himself. Um and as as Mike was saying, you know, he came up with the Royal Rumble, which is also probably like my second favorite gimmick match, and it is also probably first? only topped. Uh, also, probably the one that Mike would go with, which uh, I guess is a <laughs> like really that. good way now to transition into tonight's NXT show. Yes, well, uh, like I said, remember you, uh, Pat Patterson, rest in peace, and uh, prayers to him and his uh, family and friends and fans all over the world. So no way, easy way to segue out of, the, of this uh, segment, but we're going to have to do it. Um, tonight was the uh, NXT, NXT TakeOver War Games. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, I was kind of in and out most of the show. I actually didn't start watching until uh, the very end of the um, Tommaso Ciampa, uh, Timothy Thatcher match because of uh, family stuff here. But I didn't manage to watch most of the end of the show, um, but from what Goodbye. I saw... Yeah, what, by what? family by family stuff, you mean Hangman Page wasn't in any of the matches, so you were like, <laughs> there was no Riho. 
<laughs> no Riho. <laughs> no. Right. No. no. no the Are you sure she might have she might have been one of the kendo sticks that they used in the women's war game match? Ah, and then I missed that. Enough I need to be watch. Watched. Yes, she yes. definitely is. Um, but Mike, this is your topic, so let's go ahead and uh, review the show, shall we? To quote William Regal, it's war games. Don't half ass. Bloody me. good. That was great. My buddy, well, real quick, before we get started, my buddy, uh, James Nees, who's on his own wrestling podcast himself, he did, on his last episode, he, he did that ex- exact sound drop, and they, uh, t- they tied it in with Stone Cold's what? So you got war games. What? War games. Uh-huh. What? <laughs> funny, funny as shit, dude. That's By the way, that's my favorite wrestling podcast, uh, Take Three Wrestling Podcast. Shout out to my boy, uh, Big Jim. Go ahead. All right. So, uh, it was, what is this, the third or fourth uh, TakeOver War Games? I believe the third. No, no, this is fourth. the second. No, this is the fourth one, I think. Oh, okay. Well, then I don't know. Uh, hold on. Let's let's see here. Uh, it is... By the way, real quick, I said uh, Take 3. I meant to say 3 count Thursday, for the record. Yeah, <laughs> but... we, we, we figured you'd fuck that just up. Let's put it for the listeners in case, you know. So 2019 when they had it, 2018 they had it, but I think 2017 was the year they did the uh, yeah, this 2017 was like the makeshift war games where it was like three on three on three. Oh yeah, yeah, like, okay. This Not isn't that. war games. Makeshift? What do you mean? It was three on three on three. It wasn't four on four. Oh, five okay, on okay. five. It was okay. like three teams of still, three. So right. it's kind of still had the undisputed era in it. Yes. Pre Roger Strong. Yeah, Pete Rodgers was going to say that. Yeah. I enjoyed the entire show, including a Cameron Grimes strap match. Um, That's fine. But we'll get we'll get right started uh, quick, fast, and in a hurry here. Uh, the first match of the evening was the women's war games match. It was Team Candace of Candice LeRae, Dakota Kai, Raquel Gonzalez, and Tony Time, Tony Storm, uh, against Team Shauncee. Shotzi Blackheart, Ember Moon, Rhea Ripley, and the NXT Women's Champion, Io Shirai. Uh, note before we get into the actual match, uh, Shotzi has a new tank and it's kick ass. It shoots things. That's awesome. <laughs> it has, it has like the American Gladiators like Nerf gun launcher tennis. Oh, product. really? Yeah, it shot a rocket at Dakota. She was sitting in the cage, uh, waiting for the first member of Team Blackheart to get out to the ring. Um, looking at this, though, um, honestly, knowing that Team uh, Shanti has the advantage here, uh, they start Dakota versus Ember. Uh, then it was Tony Storm. Excuse me. Then it was Ember Moon, Tony Storm, uh, Raquel Gonzalez, Rhea Ripley, uh, Io Shirai. Candice LeRae was the last member in for her team. Um, Indy Hartwell gets involved in between the Io Shirai entrance, uh, locks the door with a padlock, leading to uh, after Candice gets in, of course. Um, and then Io hits a fucking awesome spot where she comes off the top of the cage with a trash can over her head. Um, I've shared this with my wife because my wife is an avid Disney fan. EO posted on Twitter just now about 25, 30 minutes ago, a picture of her getting ready to put the trash can over her head with the caption, I'm trash. Like she's Forky from Toy Story 4. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> I sent it to Carol and I'm like, winner. I appreciate that so much. I'm trash. I was like, I yeah, gotta, okay. I, I got to say for this match women's divisions in different pro wrestling companies um the state of the nxt women's division is clearly on display in this one match and it's fucking awesome because like you have there's basically nine women involved in this match if you count uh what's her name indy Indy hartwell yeah uh so okay close enough um so there's like nine women involved here basically they are all awesome. They are all unique. They all have great characters. They're all working really hard. You know, maybe they aren't all the most, like, completely talented in the ring. You know, they're not all Io Shirai. They're not all Ember Moon. 
But you know what? I think that even like someone like Raquel, who I'm, I'm probably mispronouncing her her name. Um, Raquel. Raquel. I don't know. <laughs> the tall one. All right. The the tall I don't know. One. I don't know. I don't. I don't know if I'm correct on that either. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start it. calling her Lady Kevin Nash. So we're just gonna roll with Ooh. that. Ooh. So, honk, Diesel. Honk. The, the thing is, like, she can clearly be led to a really good match. She's not. 100% sharp yet, but I think she has the potential to get there. And I, for one, really enjoyed her match with Rhea Ripley back at Halloween Havoc. And I think that, again, her tonight, she looked like a million bucks in a lot of ways. Maybe not a million bucks. Maybe she looked like $900,000. Like, you know, maybe she was, like, cl- close to being there, but money. not quite there. Right. But, but she looks really good. And honestly, that whole women's division, like, hands down, the NXT women's division, as far as I'm concerned, best women's division on the planet right now. Ain't close. Ain't even close. And and, and and I think we started started this year also, you know, they lose uh, Shayna Baszler and they lose Bianca Belair. And we're a little concerned. Okay, well, how was it going to go? And it's amazing. Went on December and, like, they're forgotten. Not not, not to be negative here, but they kind of forgot. Y'all may have been concerned. I was the only one on the show that was like, Ooh, uh, it just means it. that it just means that they got enough talent there to fucking not not miss a beat. And guess what? They have not missed a beat. It's been I, it's been a hundred miles an hour. Yeah, I would actually well, even it. say that like Rhea Ripley almost looks a little out of place at this point. Yes, like, she almost feels I like agree too with you on that big one. of a fish. I yeah, like I, I she would feel right at home on Raw or SmackDown right now. She looks a little bit like too big of a fish in a small pond in NXT. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like what, what we were going to end up getting with Charlotte there for however long. I feel like Charlotte's what was too big of a fish for the pond, but they brought her down there to do the stuff with, with Rhea and then took the belt off of her before her surgery right. or whatever. Which makes, which, like, which makes you wonder, though, if it wasn't COVID, would the program be done a little differently? You know what I'm saying? What decision, the decision they made around that time. Well, been, I thought we established, I mean, I, though, that I Rhea think she never was going got, after like, Rhea was here. Wasn't she? Yeah. I mean, I would say that that Rhea was already there, and Charlotte was facing Rhea no matter if there was COVID or not. I feel yeah. like the, right. I feel like that was the match no matter what. It was just, is that going to be the match, or are they going to just build off of it and then continue it two and three months down the road? And right. they right. only got they only got as little as they did because then Charlotte goes out with her required surgery and you know her time off that she needed and it then back it then peddled into eo i mean i think the question not to get off topic but to finish a point here um was was like ria a, just a transitional champion i guess needless to get the, the belt to charlotte so that eo could beat charlotte or do you think eo was like oh we can't get ria the rematch you know, because of the whole potential visa issue and we need to take the title off of her. So let's move it to Charlotte temporarily. And then once Rhea was able to get everything under control and then not have to miss any time, they were like, oh, we already decided to put the belt on EO. So let's just leave it like this. I think the latter. I think the latter. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it could definitely go either way. I'll say one thing. Rhea clearly doesn't need the title. And I don't think that I, I like honestly, I like that she's not the champion right now in NXT because too often the women's division in NXT has always ended up having the one woman who is the dominant champion and everyone else felt like so many levels below. You know, mm-hmm. you had that when Asuka was champion. You had that when Shayna was champion. So it's actually kind of nice to not see that right now. Because if Rio was champion, I actually think it would sort of feel that way. And even for the three but months since... Rio was champion, it uh, felt that way too. Even, huh? for three months, even for the three months Rio was champion in January through April, um, it felt that way too. It was her and everybody else. Yeah, you're right. You're right. It did have that feeling. So, yeah, it's, it, it's actually a nice thing. It's almost the way, like, Heyman used to book ECW, where it was like, you know, the most over guy isn't necessarily the champion because he doesn't need it. See, that's why I was thinking to myself, I was like, would it have made sense for now? Because EO's had the belt for as long as she has. Does it almost make sense for maybe it become time for EO to drop the belt and it go to somebody else for a little bit? And it almost becomes like that's a title that kind of like. I would not be against that. 
I right. honestly, I honestly would have thought that Candice would be a really good candidate for that, but I here she broke her arm in this match, so who knows? Oh man. Yeah. Yeah. One of one of the coming home spots is Shanti goes for a the the ball pit the the splash that she hits and she hit it off the top of the ladder. Candice tried to block it with a chair, and it, it looks like the chair kind of ricocheted into her arm and potentially broke a bone in her right arm. Uh, this match gets decided. Fucking Raquel, ricochet. Fuck ricochet. Uh, Raquel Gonzalez <laughs> gets the victory for Team Candice as she power bombs Io Shirai through the ladder uh, that was set up in between uh, the two rings. Um, Team Candice gets to win 35 minutes, 22 seconds. Um, are we surprised that Raquel got the victory here? Do, or are we? I mean. No. You're not surprised. Like, You're not surprised I'm, that the least effective woman on a team got the victory over the fucking woman who's been the champion for like five months now. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Shauncee could have gotten pinned. Ember could have gotten pinned. Rhea could have gotten so, pinned by Raquel Gonzalez. I had, and I could have been like, okay, fine. But the person that probably should have would have. I get that maybe they're trying to build Raquel Gonzalez, but I'm sorry. Uh, you're going into the now the takeover. The next one will probably be before Royal Rumble. You're yeah. you're gonna sell me on Raquel Gonzalez versus fucking Io Shirai when you have people like Tony Storm, uh, no. Rhea Ripley, Dakota Kai. No, I'm no. Good. Honestly, look, I I think first of all, number one, I had a feeling that if if the um, if Shotzi's team was gonna lose. It was probably EO taking the fall because you do instantly then get obviously someone who could challenge Correct. for the title. Correct, um, I agree with you. I didn't necessarily expect it to be who it was. However, uh, I don't expect that be, to be the match at the next takeover. I think they'll probably use that at like either the one of the last. Um, no, they're going to use the it at that New Year's, New Year's before the Evil. New Year's. Or, yeah, that New Year's Evil show that they're obviously going to be promoting. I think that's when you'll get that match. It's a it's a quick match that you can give Io an easy win. I think there's little chance that she loses. And, honestly, you can use it to set up her versus Dakota Kai for the next takeover, which there, there you might actually see her lose the belt. You think Dakota's ready for, uh, for the belt? You think she's I mean, ready? I, think, I think her or Tony. I think both of them yeah. were, are, are as ready as anyone is at – you know, and I mean, this, this, honestly, if you tell me that of the eight women in this match, if I was to rank them, the seven that aren't Io Shirai, like, of readiness for the title, mm-hmm. honestly, my faith, I'd put Dakota, Tony, Candice, Ember, and Rhea in the, I 100% trust them. I'd yeah. put Shaanxi in, like, the 60 to 70% range, and I'd put Raquel Gonzalez in that, probably that same range. And I think it's That's just because I, I haven't seen, I haven't seen enough of, Chauncey, except for like the lead in and right now what's going on with with yes. this to know her like, I haven't I don't know a lot of her from the independence which is really weird because I normally know a lot about people but yeah. I really I really don't know a lot about her so I don't want to say that I wouldn't trust her but of the build of the seven people to beat Io Shirai like five of them right now could beat her tomorrow and I'd be like no nah, makes sense yeah exactly like I said I I see this definitely more as probably being used to get us to an EO and Dakota Kai match, which makes a lot more sense. Oh, and if that's the way that they go and it leads to Dakota winning the belt, I will be all for a Dakota Kai title run because eventually we could have a couple of those really good Tegan knock Dakota Kai matches for the title. Hell yeah. She's a great heel, though. I'll tell you that now. She's a great heel. We were there when, when the heel turn took place. Yep, last uh, yeah. War Games last year. It was, it was phenomenal. I mm-hmm. called that, All too. Right. Next match. All right, uh, we have a Matt Wrestling Masterpiece. Tommaso Ciampa versus Timothy Thatcher. 16 minutes, 46 seconds. Ciampa hits... I don't even know what the hell he calls that move. Um, Painful. And then, yeah. <laughs> Painful. <laughs> Ouch. Ouchie. Um, yeah, gets the win. Um can these two guys wrestle like seven, seven more times? No, seriously, this match was fucking fantastic. Yeah, caught the end of it though, but what I saw Thatcher was got really busted good. Open. Yeah, I saw that. You know, one thing I realized too, Thatcher and and I guess I sort of felt this way during the beginning of his Evolve run. We all know by the end of the Evolve run, like none Everybody of us hated him. Huh? 
Everybody hated him by the end. Yeah, everyone hated him by the time by the time his evolve run was over. But at the very beginnings, he was pretty awesome. And I, I get the feeling right now that like one of the things about him that I really love in NXT is his character feels uniquely perfect for NXT. Like I don't think it would work on Raw. I don't think it would work on SmackDown. I don't even know that it would work in AEW or ROH or anywhere It might else. work on AEW, actually. I, I, I can see it work on yeah. AEW. And definitely not in, um, on I Raw, feel, Raw see, SmackDown. Here's the thing. I feel like in AEW, he would get lost in the shuffle as just another wrestler. Something about him in NXT being this, like, you know, old school, old timey, mm-hmm. like Bruno San Martino oh, style. Oh, it's perfect. Like, it's NXT. Like, it's perfect. The, the it's only way. Right. The only way his gimmick would work in AEW is if you got a fucking another aging veteran to fucking be his uh, fucking coach, like fucking uh, Bob Backlund. Yeah, bring Bob Backlund. In. <laughs> <laughs> Bob Backlund would be perfect, actually. Continue. Yeah, no, I, I, I really think he's like uniquely perfect in NXT, and like, yes. he, honestly, you couldn't have convinced me of this like two or three years ago. Two or three years ago, at the point where I was, like, personally hating on him and Evolve, you could not have told me that, okay, let's bring him to NXT and his career will be rejuvenated. But holy hell. And him and Ciampa, I mean, that match was everything that you hope for from a takeover match. I mean, whenever I heard that Timmy was going to WWE, I inevitably thought he was going to end up on the UK roster and be paired with uh, Bartel and... uh, Eichner and Walter as part of Imperium because right. he was because he was part of Ring Camp with Walter and Dieter and all of them. So I thought he I just thought he was going to end up just going over and being basically the Alexander Wolf uh, of that group uh, right before they got Alexander Wolf. But you know I think what he's been doing here has been amazing. I think it's it's his gimmick really works. Um, and I think it works for what it is right now, which is getting him accustomed to the WWE style, because eventually he is going to have to come up with a newer, fresher thing if he wants to get himself into any serious title contention. Um, you know, but with the way WWE works, you know, if he keeps with this gimmick, they may be able to get it over more and more week by week. Um, I think his gimmick could be helped by actually having fans in the crowd. Yeah. Um, you know, you know the, the small group of fans that they have at the NXT shows and stuff like that. Like, it doesn't hurt his gimmick. I feel like more crowd interaction and, like, booing him as he's, like, destroying the trainees and all that, yes. you know, would make would make his gimmick even more, like, vicious, which is something that I feel like would be great for them, um, especially because of how great his his character is um, with, the, with the submissions and stuff like that. Um, but these two guys beat the absolute shit out of each other, um, and I loved every fucking minute of it. I'm curious to see where it goes from here because I feel like the post match, like the little bit of respect stare down these two had with each other, I feel like there's story to be told. I, I don't think this is the last time we see them in a ring in like, the next in some capacity. I mean I can even see them getting into some sort of storyline where like Champa almost becomes a mentor or something to Timothy Thatcher and you use that as a way to get Thatcher into like the North American title picture or like you know, like you start to elevate him at this point. Yeah, I, I think there's a there's de- there's a definite step that we could take if that's the route we decide to go. And honestly, if that's not the route we decide to go, and it's a route where we're like, oh, they're just gonna have like, oh, you beat me this time, now I need to get even, I need my rematch, and they they have two or three more matches and stuff like that. These guys go at it like they did on this sh- on this one. I would be more than glad to continue watching those matches. <laughs> Same. Um, time of the fall. 1646, uh, Champa over Thatcher. We then go to the <sighs> the creepy Dexter Loomis portion of our evening. Um, I knew it was coming. I knew it was going to come. 12 minutes, 52 seconds, or 12 minutes and 51 seconds longer than fucking Dexter Loomis's fucking creepy mustache. Uh, Dexter Loomis over Cameron Grimes via submission uh, in a strap match. Um, wasn't my favorite match on the show, but it wasn't an awful match. But Dexter Loomis' was, mustache is awful. I liked it. it. It was probably Dexter Loomis' best match in NXT so far. 
Let me say for the record yeah. real quick. I do like Dex Loomis, but where is this thing going with him? Where's this character going? I, I, that's one of the things about his character. Like, I think it's really interesting, but I think unless you start taking it in like a and and hear me out here. I know this is gonna okay. sound crazy as a comparison, but unless you start taking it in like a Kane Undertaker direction, where like you start building on like his history and storylines like that. Like, I don't know. I, I, let me have, like, a creepy brother of his show up who, like, he's the only person that can stop from, I don't know, raping Katie Whoa. Vick. We went there. Let's... Well, that was the fucking, that was the Kane and Undertaker storyline. I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just glad we went there. Um, Yeah, this, this, like, they got to either intensify his gimmick to where, like, he becomes, like, stalkerish. Right, or they, or or they've got to like shift his role. Because I feel like now, like a few months into this thing, now uh, he's me seeing him. Uh, it just it's just there. Like, okay, he won a match, good match against Cameron Grimes, but it's just there. It feels like stale already. I don't know well, if I'd I mean, go that. I don't know if I'd go that far that it's stale. I just think that the thing is, is they've gotten to this point where this with this feud where these guys have now wrestled for probably three full months. And it's time for these two guys to kind of be away from each other. But yes. these guys, these guys work really well together in the ring. You know, once the bell rings without having to tell the story, getting to the ring. Um, so it's easy to put these guys together because they know that they're going to have a good match. No, it's not, you know, Adam Cole, Johnny Gargano. But I mean, it's better than some shit we've seen on NXT before. Um, yes. So mm-hmm. literally, it's one of those things where it's like, you know, you're going to get a good match from these guys. You you know that you don't have eight members of your men, males roster and eight women from your female roster to put matches together this card. I mean, you you put it on here because you know it gets to the end of it. But now now is a time if you're NXT that you have to you kind of have to turn Dexter Loomis to eleven, and you got to get him going because if you don't, this gimmick could very well fall to the wayside real quick and yep. become very yeah. stale. I agree. And that's that's unfortunate because, you know, Dexter Loomis has played this role basically for like 10 years because he played it as Samuel Shaw in Impact Wrestling before he came to NXT. And it was the same thing. He was like that creepy, like, I have this really weird mustache. I stare at people through windows. I may or may not eat brains for breakfast. I don't know. I'm not going to confirm or deny it. Um so it's like it's it, he's got to intensify this and find like a quote victim or someone to stalk to make this thing. And honestly, the, the route to go and, and stay with me here and it's going to be a little bit of a spoiler for what happens next is he would be the perfect person to start stalking Candice LeRae. Yeah, or I can in, see that. I can see or, that. In, or Indy Hartwell or something like that leading to a North American title shot. Versus the new North American champion, Johnny Gargano. I would actually be totally behind that. I think you could do a really interesting storyline with that, too. Because if Candace is out any length of time, which she probably will be, it keeps her on TV. Yeah. In a non-competitive role. You have Team Gargano, which now includes the newly unmasked Austin Theory. Um, which Joe probably fucking fell out of his chair fucking when he found out yeah. who it was. <laughs> you can't th- you can't see Austin Theory and not think Joe Lopez. At least I can. I'm okay with that. I saw I saw him, I was like, oh shit, Joe's probably happy. <laughs> I was pretty happy. You know what? Honestly, I really like that idea as a storyline. But like, also too, don't give it to me the way that they always do stalker storylines in pro wrestling. Like, don't give me the, like, here's the camera angle of Candace, you know, leaving her yoga class and, like, going to the supermarket and we don't know who's doing it. Like, let's go in the opposite direction. Let's own from the start that it's Cameron, it's uh, not Cameron Grimes, it's the other one, uh, whose name I'm Dexter, totally like. Dexter Loomis. Dexter Loomis, thank you. Uh, it's Dexter Loomis, you know what I mean? Like, let's have Candace, like, in the kitchen cutting up some vegetables and you just see Dexter Loomis, like, out the window staring in at her or something. Like, let's go full camp with this. You know, there's no reason why we can't. There's no audiences. Let's yeah, exactly. Let's just go for it. 
Yeah, I, I mean, I would go. I mean, I would suggest that they just go for it too, because I think it makes the most sense to just be as transparent as it is. And I mean, even, you you can even be like, you can have Dexter talking in the background. You know? Yeah. I'll leave, I'll leave you alone if you if you make Johnny face me. Like just ma- like make it where it's like he's not stalking her to like try to get her to leave her husband. Just be like, I want what Johnny has. Give, want a tell like, shot. I'll leave you alone if Johnny does this. And then like she could play it off and, you know, Austin Theory can, you know, beat him up and, you know, Indy could be there and stuff like that. Like they could make this work. And I feel like it would be a fun storyline. It would give Johnny something to do. It would honestly get Johnny away from Damian Priest because I feel like they've been linked together for fucking. Yeah, it's time to move on. Six months, seven months. Damian Priest has been in the fucking North American title picture since fucking Royal Rumble, it feels like. Um, I mean, anyone else have anything to add to this, or can we just get right to that match? I mean, yeah, yeah we can move on to that one. Move on. Move on. All right, 17 minutes, 28 seconds. The first ever three-time NXT North American champion is now Johnny Gargano. He defeated Damian Priest and former champion Leon Ruff. Hard for me to say that out loud and not be like, what the fuck are they doing? He's got, look, he's in the Colin Delaney role from, like, ECW circa, what, 2008? Yes. Like, you no, know, No, he's all... definitely, he's definitely in that role. Definitely in that role. Yeah. Like, look, he's going to get this little push for a couple more months, and then I don't know that I see him, like, long-term being in WWE unless he, like, bulks up or, I don't know, grows to five inches. Maybe he becomes the third member of the Rascals. I mean, maybe they, they certainly have the spot for it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, this match was this match was good. I liked it. Uh, I like what they were doing with the, you know, Leon being like, no, no, I, I, I'm the champ. Like, believe in me. And then, you know, Johnny has all of his uh, team Ghostface uh, family come out. Yeah. So- um, that part when all of a sudden there were like the six different like ghost face really reminded me of that scene in Scream 2 where like they're on the stage doing the Greek tragedy and all of a sudden there's like all the different ghost face masks. Yes. It's like the worst scene in the movie. I love that movie. It's the worst scene in the movie. And that's what this reminded me of for a second. Um, one of the ghost face hops up on the uh, apron blast Damian Priest in the head with a uh, lead pipe. Gargano hits the springboard spike DDT on Leon Ruff and wins the match and regains his North American title. Post-match, it's revealed that the person that jumped up on the apron is none other than Joe's uh, wrestling crush of Austin Theory. I wonder where they're going to go with that, though. Like, him connected with the Garganos now... Well, Johnny, lie. for a Johnny second, put I thought on his the, Instagram uh, and said his adopted son. I'm not gonna lie. For a quick second, I thought uh, Champa might have, might have been the uh, reveal of the person that helped uh, Gorgano for a second. But, no, I, I think I think they've they've kept Johnny and Tommaso, you know, away from each other because of how long they were together. Whether it be as partners or as foes, they were together for basically four years yeah i think it was time to let them breathe i mean th- there may come a time where we get a relaunch of that feud and that's okay it's not right now it, th- those guys yeah, need I, some time I, to, I to know, let that breathe i know people who haven't been in relationships for as long as that feud lasted yeah so and i and you're talking to the biggest johnny gargano supporter that you know and one of the biggest tomaso champa supporters you know and even I'm like, all right, you got to let them breathe a little bit before you get them back against each other. Because if you don't, this has the potential to not be good. Because they they were at such a high level when their feud ended that anything less than that, you're gonna be like disappointed. But that's but that sucked. Like yeah. they could have a, they, that's, they, a they that's, could, that's a fair point. That's a fair point. They could have four star matches, and you'd be like, but it's but it wasn't the five star matches they were having four years ago. Like. Really, guys, we're gonna get ticky tacky over a fucking four or a five on a Dave Meltzer scale. No, that this 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 is where it needs to be. Um, personally, I don't know if Johnny needs the title, but it works for Johnny's heel character. Um, so I'm not opposed to it. I feel like he's a guy that, you know, him, Champa. Um, I don't feel like those guys need the belt. I feel like they're a big enough attraction in NXT to where 
having a title belt, you know, as part of a story makes sense. But I don't feel like there are long term people that need the titles. Um, See, I will say though, like just as we were like, you know, kind of fantasy booking a whole Dexter Loomis and um, Johnny Gargano storyline around the belt you know like i think that's the thing that you get from gargano as champion you get more room for stories around the belt as opposed to just another feud for the title which i think is where you would have been if damian priest held on to it yes that i agree or won it i suppose since leon ruff was the one who had it yes i agree with you that i feel like this gives them the opportunity to have more storyline instead of challenger yeah it gives the title more depth with, with a heel Gargano than it would with either of the other guys. Yeah. And I, and like, I feel like that's, even that's if a good you thing. Don't, even if you don't go in the direction of, like, Dexter Loomis, like, you can easily get a storyline going with, like, Kushida or, like, a number of other, you know, faces in the company right now. There's actually quite a few people that could go after Gargano in a storyline way. You could have the Undisputed Era try to rega- regain the titles, and you could have yeah. Johnny no, Loomis. Johnny versus any of them, per, per, personally, Kyle O'Reilly, but whatever. I was thinking of the same thing. Because, you know, Kyle is fucking one of the most underrated fucking wrestlers in that fucking company right now. Speaking of. All right, transition to the main event of the evening. It was the men's war game match, the undisputed era of Adam Cole, Kyle O'Reilly, Roderick Strong, and Bobby Fish against the kings of NXT, Pat McAfee, the Bruiserweight, Pete Dunn, Danny Birch, and Oni Lorcan. 45 minutes, one second, sees the Undisputed Era claim victory as a, they hit a, like a series of moves ending with a Kyle O'Reilly knee off of the top rope onto a chair that was being held by Oni Lorcan that hit him dead in the face and split his eye open really badly. Oof. Yeah, literally, he got hit. And started covering his face like he was really hurt. Like, I thought he maybe broke his nose. And then, like, Kyle pinned him. And, like, I don't know if that was supposed to be the finish or not. Like, I'm going to say that it was supposed to be the finish. So I'm just going to say because I don't want it to, like, feel different to me. But literally, like, you could tell Oni, Oni was, was hurting. And I, it just came off. I'm like, oh, maybe that wasn't the finish. But Oni was just like, fuck it. My face is fucked up. We're supposed to lose anyways. Right. I'll just take the fucking fall and deal with the repercussions because my face is fucked up. Like, I can see that being a thing. Like, I'm not, like, trying to make it, like, so oh, man, that, that's, that's not the way it should happen. But, you know, sometimes if you're hurt and you know your team's going to lose, it's it'd be better just to be like, let me get the fuck out of here and not get hurt worse. Yeah. Then so, fucking and, and deal with being yelled at than fucking putting myself on the line. So I've been watching this match pretty much the entire time we've been talking. Um, am I crazy or is this one of the best matches of the year? Yeah, no, for real. It's, it's a hundred percent. This is, this, this is fucking insane. Yeah. And this, and this is with a guy who's had one pro wrestling match. This is one of the best war games matches I think I've ever even seen. Did, did you see McAfee's moonsault that he put Roddy through the table? Yes. No, no, no. no. Th- these guys are all killing it. I mean, like, Look, there's been a lot of really great War Games matches. There's been a lot of really shitty War Games matches, not just in NXT, like in general. In general. And I, I think this ranks as one of the best ones. Yeah, I, I'm right there with you, dude. I thought this match was fucking awesome. Um, top to bottom, I think all eight guys busted their ass in this match. Like, um, I can't wait to watch it again, and I'm not even done watching it yet. Exactly. This is the message you want to watch a second and third time to see little things yeah. you didn't see the first time because it's like this match kicked ass. This is like this is this is a five star match right here for me. This is like I don't like like if I were Dave Meltzer, I would be like jerking off in the bathroom of the Tokyo Dome right now. Not the Tokyo Dome. That's the only place to do it. Yeah, no, this match is fucking the bee's knees, all that fun shit. Um I really want to give, before we move to whatever, uh, major fucking props to Kyle O'Reilly and fucking Pete Dunne. Those guys went 45 fucking minutes in war games. Yo, for and, real. And they didn't get a lot of rest in that match. Those guys fucking went to town the entire time. There was um, never a dead spot in this match. This match was so good, it makes me reconsider how good the women's match actually was. 
That's what I, like like this is one of those where it's like people are like, oh, the women's match should have main evented. If this match would have been no. the first match on the show and they went off like this, you should have just canceled the rest of the show. Yo, for real. You should have been like, guys, we're not going to be able to top that. Let's just go home. Yo, no, re- no, seriously. Like, people literally before, this is before the main event started. They were like, oh, they should have let the women's main event. And I'm like. No. Fucking. No, no. Re- I would remove, disagree with that. Remove foot from mouth because there's not a shot in hell that that match was better than the fucking men's ever could have been. And this is, again, coming from a guy who's had one professional wrestling match in his fucking life. Right. Um, so, uh, yeah. Uh, big props to this match. Um, the, I guess the question that I have here, though, you know, now that we're kind of through it and Joe's pretty much through it, what is next for them? Them being the Undisputed Era. I won't lie. Part of, last, part of tonight felt like like the kind of the end of the road. I don't know why. It kind of felt weird. Oh, I, I disagree. Kind of they feel I, 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 I hope not. I'm just saying, like, now. it crossed my mind. I was like, is this the it? Is this it? I mean. I, I completely disagree. They feel more rejuvenated to good. me. I think, I think that maybe it's a good time to, like, change up some of the roles. Like, maybe it's a good time for Adam Cole and, I don't know, maybe Adam and Bobby to become, like, the tag team for the group. Or Adam and Roddy to be the tag team for the group. And maybe give Kyle, like, his chance at being the lead guy. Because, you know, he had that great match with Finn Balor for the belt at the last TakeOver. Was that right. TakeOver? Mm-hmm, that's correct. Right, and and now here he gets the win, and he's looking amazing. As as Mike said, he went 45 minutes here. You know, I I think that honestly, if 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 we ended up with Kyle O'Reilly as NXT champion in the near future, I would not complain. He's a former ROH World Champion. That's not unheard of. I can see it. I can see it definitely. Yeah, uh, give me Kyle O'Reilly in a world title picture tomorrow, because um. Let, let, let's let's address, I guess, the elephants in the room. Um, it was put on the post uh, the post show call that uh, Triple H has announced that Kerry and Cross, who there was a vignette for, and Finn Balor, both are medically cleared to come back. So it'll only be a matter of time, uh, I guess, before we see Kerry and Cross come back. So. Obviously, Karrion Cross is going to need something to do. Do you throw him right into the title picture, or is he someone that you do something else with? That's going to be really interesting. Because you could get away with just getting him right back into the title picture. Yeah. He'll shake uh, shit up pretty quickly by jumping back in. Trying to see if there's anything else that was really of note uh, that he said in the conference call, other than, you know, they did an x-ray on Candace's arm, waiting the results of that. Um, other people have been, you know, the bumps and bruises that dinged up, including, you know, or, uh, Oni getting his face kind of fucked up. Um, New Year's Eve, New Year's, the New Year's Evil thing. Um, you know, that's that's going to be the end of a really long couple days of wrestling for wrestling fans. Um, hmm. So I wish AEW the best of luck and NXT the best of luck that because you got to remember and, you know, I might be speaking a foreign language to Ernest as I talk about this. Uh, Wrestle Kingdom Night 1, January 4th, Monday night, which will be well, right yeah, Raw. That so you go, That's right. you go, that you go, Raw, Wrestle Kingdom. If you want to watch AEW Dark, you can. Wrestle Kingdom Night 2. Uh, and then you have fucking AEW, NXT, and then you have New Year's Dash. Whew. I I will wish both AEW and NXT the best of luck because after two days of fucking New Japan uh, Wrestle Kingdoms, people may be on the uh, harsh judge scale for uh, North American wrestling. Yeah, I'm tired just thinking about it. Oh, yeah, and that's something where I, me and you are both tired thinking about it, and I have to work fucking Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night. Oh. So speaking of AEW, I think it's a good time to get into Ernest's topic. Yeah, because uh, AEW Dynamite this week, uh, probably the best episode ever, certainly the biggest episode ever, certainly the most hyped episode ever of their uh, now 14-month uh, uh, existence uh, on television, and it lived up to the hype. The entire show was great. 
Uh, we saw the uh, the return of Sting after what was like six years away from them. From, why, don't you, um, why don't you just say correctly, debut of Sting. Sting was never in AEW. Well, you know what I mean, the debut of Sting. No, no, I don't know what you mean. All Elite Wrestling has never had Sting. How is he returning to AEW? It was, it was his return. I, I, said, to, I said debut. I said debut. Said it was return. his return to TNT. Return to TNT after, after almost 20 years. <laughs> Yeah, Ted, Tur- Ted Turner called. Doesn't I, fuck. I really wish I had the uh, uh, Tony Schiavone uh, uh, sound drop when he uh, it's Sting. But anyway, um, the night was capped off by a title change, a big title change. In fact, uh, Kenny Omega wins the AEW Championship from uh, John Moxley. Um, great, re- really great match. Obviously, the ending kind of weird. Uh, obviously no, we we're gonna no, go the more. Ending, the ending uh, was perfect. Well. I mean, it was weird um, for me. Um, at the same time, I'm, it's got me interested to see what he's going to do because I mean, you saw the ending and you see how it's more of as chasing, um, was it Don Scully? What's his name? Don Sully? Don Callis. Don yeah. Callis, thank you. Uh, yeah. Not, 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 the, Vin, not Vin Scully. Vin Scully. <laughs> Shout out to Vin Scully, of course. Uh, L.A. Dodger, great uh, announcer. Um, yeah, chasing to, to the limo. And, of course, uh, we're going to find out more details on Impact on Axis uh, this Tuesday with uh, Kenny Omega. So I, I'm going to be trying to turn it, tune into that, of course. Um, but all in all, great match. Um, we got a towel change. And I just want to open a discussion really more so about Omega, where he is now. He gets his title finally and just the scope of the entire uh, company going forward for these next couple months for him. Uh, all right. First off, I'll say this was not the best uh episode of of Dynamite in the fourteen month that they've been running. Um, maybe the most like star studded, but I wouldn't say it was the best. Um, the Dynamite Diamond Battle Royal was kind of a waste for the first you know fifteen minutes of the show. Um, because we don't even know what the fuck that ring does because MJF has had it for a year and basically got nothing out of it. Um, Chris Jericho he kills, versus- he kills it. That's it. All he does is kiss it. It's fucking retarded. Um, uses it to win a match. Yeah. <laughs> it's supposed it. to be, in, but it's supposed to be important. Yeah, all right. You know what else is important? Like fucking wearing your mask during COVID, but some people don't fucking want to do it either. Um, wah, wah, wah. So then, so then we have a, a Jericho versus Kazarian match, and now it ends with Jericho being like, "If we don't get it together, we're going to disband." Really, MJF just joined the fucking group. Like, what the fuck are you guys doing? Uh. We then get to the good portion after the, the the lone women's match on the show. How is this the biggest episode? You don't even have a fucking women's title match. Yeah, that was weird. Can we talk about that? Oh, but you had, uh, but you had the champion. I'm scared of shit. It's because you have some fucking creepy fucking member of the ring fucking trying to Want to be a fiend, female fiend. Nah, she's from the ring, dog. <laughs> Ab- Ab- uh, Ab- 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 Abaddon. Abaddon, whatever the fuck her name is. Yeah, that one. So, uh, so, so the question here is though about Omega as champion, like what, like our reaction to it, or like yeah, where we reaction and it? where do you see where do you see this going? What do you see this? So, you get a whole okay. year out of this. What do you think? I, well, I was gonna say I I know we just got done with a pretty lengthy John Moxley reign with the belt, and obviously Jericho prior to him had a pretty decently long reign too. But I'm gonna tell you. I'm kind of down for Omega to have a really long title reign. I can't think of anyone else who's anywhere near built up enough to take the belt from him currently in the company. And, like, honestly, look, when AEW was first announced, when it was made clear that Kenny Omega was coming over to, you know, to the company, it felt like he was going to be the guy they built the company around. It felt like they were going to position him at where he should have been, frankly, because it's where he was at that point in time in his career. He was the best bout machine. He was, you know, he was the guy that you put out there and nine times out of 10 gave you a five-star match. And they brought him to AEW. And for some odd reason, instead of putting him in that position that like they clearly should have put him in, they didn't, you know, they went in the opposite direction. They went in, you know, kind of making him more of a mid card guy. They kind of making him like, you know, kind of tease at the main event, but then being clearly like, okay, but we're not going to put this all on his back. And the thing is, he has the talent. He has the ability. He's the guy who you put it on his back. He's the franchise player, you know? 
He's the Roman Reigns of their company. That's there's no reason not to let him now just run with it and be everything that he could be. Now, I think the really interesting part is where does all this impact stuff kind of fall into it? Because I don't know how long you get with Omega as like the top heel guy in AEW, but as the representative of impact. If that's the direction that they're taking things, and it may or may not be, I've read some I read some things online, and you know, when it's on the internet, it has to be true, that this is like a one-off appearance with him being on Impact, and that it's probably going to lead to like a one-off match involving um, the Good Brothers in AEW, but that's pretty much going to be the extent of what we get out of this. And if that's the case, that's fine, but then I kind of wonder, so where are they taking this? Like, is, is this going to be Omega building his own little unit? You know, are we going to get him away from the elite now? Are we going to get him away from the young Hopefully. bucks? And, you know, right? Like, I, I can get behind Omega having his own little unit. I don't know who else you put in there if you're not, if you don't have actual access to regular Impact stars. And then I don't know who else you actually get to be, like, Omega's, like, group. Um I've heard that Don Callis, apparently his contract with Impact is up in like a month and he will probably definitely be coming to AEW and being at least Omega's like corner man, which I'm totally fine with. I think you can run with that. Um, But again, I don't, I think that Omega has the potential for a very long title reign because I could see a lot of guys challenging him for the belt, but I don't see anyone who's anywhere near built up. To take quick it. question, quick question: Is Omega officially a heel now, or are we still that's still in the weeds? I mean, he cheated to beat Moxley for the belt. I, I think that's really the point when you're like, "Yo, you're definitely a heel now." Right. Like it um, felt very similar. It felt very similar to the Austin heel turn at Mania 17. Just you know, yeah. Instead of going along vibe. with Vince, Absolutely. he's going along with a different company because that's how you because you couldn't have Tony Khan out there like that wouldn't have worked to get any heel heat. So. No. All right. Um, on to what Joe is saying about Kenny having his own stable or his own clique. Don't fucking do it. Let Why? fucking let Ke- let Kenny be Kenny. Let, let Kenny, Kenny cook. Let Kenny let, cook. No, no. Let Kenny be the best bout machine. Let Kenny be the seven star fucking guy. Let him be him. And who who is he him with? Him. And the only other person that he was really in, in that scenario with was was Coda. And guess what? None of the guys at Impact have to offer, and none of the guys at AEW have to offer are Kota Ibushi, and they never will be. So let Kenny be Kenny. Let him be by himself. Let Don Callis be his corner man. And you know what? Let the rest of it fucking sit where it lays. Let the, let let the Young Bucks be the Young Bucks by themselves. Let Adam Hangman Page do his own thing. Let Cody be part of the Nightmare family, and, and just let Kenny do his thing. Because at the end of the day, I want the best bout machine. I want Mr. Seven Stars. I don't want, oh, here's the leader of this faction who's the champion. We had that with Chris Jericho. I right. don't need it again. Let Kenny be Kenny. Let Kenny be the heel champion by himself and prove, hey, you may not like me, and that's okay. But guess what? I'm going to knee you in the face. I'm going to hit you with the one wing angel. And I'm going to hold this title for fucking 700 plus days. I will say, if this Reigns go beyond six months, I could see him and Hangman definitely crossing paths again later in the year. I, later, was, later. I, was, I was actually about to say, you know, AEW, one thing I will give them credit for that they seem to be getting kind of good at is some of the long term storytelling. Because, you know, if again, I, I think that Omega probably should have been one of the top guys from like day one. But you can't you can't deny them that they had a story that they were going to tell. And look, we're here. You know, it took two years to get here, but we're here now where the story of Kenny Omega, you know, who should have been the top guy kind of not being there and having to rebuild himself. We're here now. He's built himself. You know, juxtaposed to that is this storyline of Hangman Page, who has also been slowly building and has had his, you know, his stumbles in the road and his falls backwards and stuff. I wouldn't be surprised if this eventually leads to a year from now where Paige is the guy who dethrones Omega, where Paige is like the super good guy who finally steps up and beats the super evil heel. Without Um, question. Without question. But here's the thing, though. Can you keep Paige fresh for a year 
and still do that and still build him to that point? Because right now, I don't know that he's there. Right now, he's the guy that's still jobbing out to, you know, the fucking Diamond Ring Battle Royal participants. So, you know, I'm like, if that is where they're going to go, that's great. But they need to start getting him into some feuds. They need to start getting him some big wins, like ASAP. Uh, again, I don't know, but again, I don't know if you got to rush him here. I don't know if you if if you got to rush him into things to get him to a spot. I think right now, coming out of his, you know, oh, I'm no longer a tag team. He's lost. He's confused. It makes sense, you know. If if that means that you know January first, you put him in a feud with somebody, and that starts the the slow build, and, and you know he he doesn't challenge until November or December, you know, and, and does the things the right way to get to, to Kenny. I mean, it, it makes more sense, but yeah. I, I mean, I think right now rushing him into feuds and to storylines, isn't going to keep him any more relevant than him, you know, going out and just hitting people with random buckshot lariats uh, at random points on the show. Um, I think that the, the, the issue here is there isn't a guy on the roster right now that includes John Moxley that includes Chris Jericho that I will tell you right now should dethrone Kenny Omega. I agree. I right. agree. The One only, the, like, the only, the only person that you could, that you could sit here and have a discussion on if it, it, it it's, if it's right is Adam page. I agree. In fact, one of the weeks we missed um, a couple weeks ago, we couldn't do the show. My topic was going to be who the next uh, guy, next guy is in line to be the, the guy AEW. Well, this was after, this, and this was after um, Omega got the title shot. And I said yeah. it'll be Omega and it'll be Adam Page, and it spread out about, about a year or so between the two. So here's my here's my question to you guys though. Now, okay, obviously Moxley is going to get a rematch. I'm assuming that the next pay per view we're going to get at least the another revolution. Moxley. Yeah. Right. We're going to get another Moxley Omega match. It's going to happen. After Moxley, who do you got as, as Omega's next challenger? Who do you got as the guy that he should like probably beat next? Because let's be honest, like he's probably not losing the belt anytime soon, like we said. Well, we're not. Are we, are we assuming that he'll be a full-blown heel by uh by February? Like, I think he's a full-blown heel now, personally. Okay, okay. Cause, cause totally. I, I was only asking because of, uh, I mean, are we going to follow the heel face thing and, you know, to the T. I mean, that's up to you. I mean, who who would you put him in the ring against? Who? Let's say he knocks out Moxley next. Moxley's going to be the next challenger. He knocks him down. He maybe Lance it. Archer. Huh? Lance Archer. Maybe going. Maybe going with babyface run very soon. Just saying. Uh, the next person you should take out is going to surprise you that I'm going to mention his name here. Eddie Kingston. Probably. Nope. Oh, okay. No, and I think him and Eddie Kingston could have great matches and even better promos, but no, I don't oh, think yeah. Eddie Kingston. Uh, the next guy that he takes out is Orange Cassidy. Ooh. Really? I would, I, I would go to, I would go to Cassidy because I think you can get a couple of really good matches out of him. You can get some good, uh, promos. If you go the route of, of having him with his own little click, you know, you could have six man tag matches with, uh, Best friends and OC versus, you know, team fucking Kiki in the face, um, yeah. whatever the fuck they want to call themselves. Um, it, it, I just think this is the, that, that's a name that, that that you could go with. I mean, obviously you could go with somebody like MJF. You could go with somebody like Jericho. Um, I mean, look, if you want, but Jericho's honestly, been in, the, in in main events fucking so much already. I think I'm, one I'm wild card. Assu- I think one wild card. Assuming he breaks the imb- be uh be Cody. If they break the whole like I want to challenge for the title thing again, if they can break. I that. mean, honestly, one wild card that they just introduced this week, and and I mean the quality of the match isn't going to be the greatest thing, but it's still this certain the, to me. There's a certain amount of um, intrigue to it. Omega versus Sting. Okay, could Sting, you know, go in the ring? Do you think you know I, his neck issues? I, I was hearing that, I was hearing stuff about like the him um not taking bumps and stuff. But, I mean, I honestly don't know that they got him out there in wrestling gear and stuff. So I mean, right. like, it, it at least feels heard, like he's gonna. I heard he festival. signed. I heard he signed a multi-year contract because he wants to wrestle. Okay. I mean, and that's the thing. Like, if you have him as a wrestler, like, don't put the world title on him. But obviously, like, him and Omega, you know, again, 
Sting is not in the shape that he was 10 years ago or, you know, obviously 20 years ago or whatever. Right. Actually his prime. So, but, like, it, it's still got to low-key be a little bit of a dream match. So, real quick, if I'm forecasting the next six months between right now, December 2020, and let's say, okay, up to June 2021, the three feuds I see Omega potentially getting into, obviously Moxley again some point in the next two months. Um, I said Lance Archer, I think, also, too. And I think, I think I said, depending what happens with the, if he decides to uh, undo his little embargo about not wrestling in, for the ADM championship, I can see Cody maybe getting something in there in the middle of the year. The, the only other potential wild card I could see is, and if, if Impact, you know, if they're working with Impact at all, and this helps lead to this, if AEW ends up working with New Japan in any kind of a like significant way, you got to assume that we'd see possibly Okada like challenging for the belt at that point. You, you figure Omega will push that, given his history. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, they, yeah, yeah, but they got to wait for the guy who's the the uh, GM of New Japan to basically have his fucking contract expire because that guy's the guy that's pissed off at the way that fucking they left. New Japan. But isn't that pretty close to happening? Like, isn't he? Yeah, no, it, it should it should be done by the end of the year. But still, I mean, that that's something that's going to happen in probably the later half of 2021. That's not something that you're going to see. Oh yeah, no. Go but up against WrestleMania. Like, like, we could be looking at main events of like double or nothing. You know what I mean? Yes. So what I would say next all three all out. I would say probably all out. If you're gonna get Okada here, it's got to be for all out. Yeah, all out's in May, um, I think, right? it's in May. Yeah, something like that. Um, what I what I would say all is out would be, all out in September, wouldn't it? Yeah, no, no, yeah, no, 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 no. You're right. All out, um, double shit. or nothing is in May. Right, all, all out, out's in, all out's in September. The crazy yeah. thing too is like, look, in in a realistic speaking way. The idea of there potentially even being live crowds at shows come September, like in a more significant way than there are now, is real. Oh, so, yeah. like, getting governor. Okada versus Omega at a point when you can actually, like, potentially try to sell out a building again in North I mean, America. In North America, right? Well, definitely yeah. Florida. With the way our governor's acting, and he keeps keeps reiterating that we're not going backwards, we're going to go forward. So. The, the the odds of Florida really getting like full crowds are a lot uh higher now than they were probably even like two months ago. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's in fucking Florida, New York, Vegas, California. You put fucking Kazushiko Okada versus Kenny Omega on the top of the card in North America. That fucker is going to be sold out, and it's not even going to be fucking close. And my question: do you, you do, do you do that on a pay per view, or do you do it on, on a dynamite? No, you're not, you not. You never. You never give that away on dynamite. Oh, no, no, right, but 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 the yeah, temptation no, of getting the ratings. No, I'm saying. I no, agree with you 100. percent No, no, no. I agree with you, Mikey. I'm just saying though, this idea like oh, you're you get winning, a pop of the ratings. Okay, you're winning the ratings battle with fucking. Uh, no, no, I'm sorry. You're winning the fucking uh, with the butcher, the blade, and the bunny versus Death Triangle in a fucking six person tag match. You're winning the fucking rating battle with that. What rating pop are you gonna get? Like 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 what like what rating pops you like what are you trying to get? At this point, you're already winning the fucking that's battle. The, uh, that's the, if they're going to go that route, that should definitely be in May June. The, like, don't uh, you never you never give away. And I'm sorry, I don't know if you know how great Kazushiko Okada is. If you don't figure it out, you, you never give away Kazushiko Okada on fucking. I I always guarantee you the next Moxley uh, Omega match will be a revolution. Probably. You don't think so? No, I think it will be. Oh yeah, I agree. Oh, I definitely agree. So, all right. Um, I'm uh, not here. Yeah. Uh, so let's see. Um, things that I think happen. Uh, I think he feuds with or- Orange Cassidy. Mm-hmm. I think he'll feud with one member of the inner circle, not named Chris Jericho. Which one? Do, Pick one. Do, uh, I think he ends up feuding with uh, Jake Hager, but it'll probably end up being MJF because you know, fuck MJF. Um, and his other big feud for 2021 will be whomever from a crossover. Okay. Whether it be somebody from Impact or... Because I I see Adam happening, but happening in the back end of the 2021, uh, if not early 2022. That's what I'm saying. I wouldn't put him anywhere before 
Holy latter God. half of, latter half of 21 or early 2022 because I just right. don't see where you got to get Adam up there. I mean, even if Adam defeats Darby and holds the TNT title for, you know, three or four months and brings some prestige to that and beats everybody, you know, going against that. Another name that, that's been, that, that hasn't been seen in a while that could be fun for a Kenny Omega feud, especially if he if he's playing the role of tweener, it makes more sense than if he's playing the role of full on heel. And that's the exalted one. I would love to see a Kenny Omega Brody Lee uh, title match. He's been he's been Where, quiet. I haven't seen Brody Lee in a while. He's been out since the dog collar match. Right. Is it's he like hurt he, or something? Or he, like, he he might have been. I'm not 100 percent sure. I'll I'll do some investigation. I'll tell uh, you this. We, I'll tell you what though. The good thing about that that the, this John Silver push has been really cool. Oh, no, Mr. Number One. <laughs> Uh, yeah, John. He's funny. He's funny as shit, dude. That dude's funny. I, I know he, I know you guys knew him from like other promotions, but like seeing him actually get a little rub now, that's nice. Okay, yeah, so, okay. Wh- so what they're saying is, is he's been out since the dog collar match, and he's reportedly out due to a ankle injury. Oh. Okay. Which I mean makes sense because I mean it's one of those things where ankles are not the easiest thing in the world to come back from. You know, you know how. Right. Bad it is for after, for for like football players and stuff like that to come back from high ankle sprains. So if it's something similar to that, or you know maybe it's a tear in one of the ligaments in his ankle or something like that, like that's one of those where it's like that could be a serious thing. And you know, got me honest with you though. Like I'm not saying it's Brody's fault, obviously him not being there because he obviously him being there has made the Dark Order much much more relevant to me. But I I don't hate him as much anymore. I don't know. I I, I feel like they finally make sense. In some yeah, way. Yeah, no, I agree with you. They finally found kind of their like niche. And, yeah, they found and, they found and a niche a bit now. Is great in the ring, so yeah. it helped. So join right. join join Dark Order. <laughs> all right, last one. I uh, think of Joe. Think of you. All right, so I'm hoping this will be a fun one, and we can keep it definitely to like our like ten minute window or whatever. Okay. Let's do um. That. So. We live in a time, I think, for, like, one of the first times, really, where there are a lot of really talented wrestling couples out there. You know, it's not, you know, it always used to kind of be, like, really talented tag teams. But I think this is really the first generation that we're living through where there's a lot of coupled together wrestlers, you know, who happen to both be working and happen to both be fantastic and aren't even necessarily in the same company all the time. We do have some Romeo and Juliet situations, folks. So um, what I thought would be fun for this week is instead of kind of arguing like who the better couples are, let's take the individual couples and let's argue who the better wrestler is in that couple. So for example, I will give you a wrestling couple and you guys, and I'll chime in also, uh, Say which one of these two people you think is the better wrestler and why. And we'll go through maybe like four or five of these. You know, like I said, we won't keep, we won't make this too long. And I think we go, we go right for a big one to start with. And that's going to be, uh, they were, they wrestled tonight. Um, I'm a fan of both of them. I'm really interested to see what Mike's uh, response is to this one. Uh, and that is Johnny Gargando, Johnny Gargano. And Gargando. <laughs> Lando Carl, you see it. <laughs> <laughs> so who you got, Candace or Johnny? Who's your favorite in that couple? Who's going first? Yeah, Mike, you can go Mike, first. Mike, Mike, going first. Mike, you going first. And Johnny wins. Wheels of Johnny. Johnny wins. Wheels of Johnny. Johnny wins. Now, real quick, Joe, let me take Johnny. Joe, this is based on what we th- – okay, uh, let's sort of clear on this. Explain one more time. Who's your favorite? Who, who do you who Who's do you like more? Like there's, there, there's, do you like Johnny in ring more? Or do you like Candice? I like oh, Johnny. Johnny's amazing. Candice is great. <laughs> Doing wrong, but Johnny's probably top two or three wrestlers in the whole company. In the whole company? So, NXT. That's a brand. So oh, okay. it's a brand. Uh, I mean, he's up there though. I'd, I'd put him. In, I'd put him in the top ten of the entire company. Yeah. Maybe even top five. Maybe from, even top from, five. From, from, from an in-ring perspective. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. All right, so let's go to the next couple. Uh, oh, make this Joe, 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 you, Joe, Joe, you didn't pick. Oh, um, yeah, I'll give it to Johnny. Why not? Uh, so, so sweep across the board for Johnny. Woohoo! Yeah. 
Girls right. love Johnny. Johnny wins. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the so next couple, next couple, uh, Bianca Belair and Montez Ford. Who you got? Bianca Belair. Montez is great in the ring. We're wrong, but man, Bianca is awesome. I gotta get to Bianca also. I mean, Bianca, I feel like of the two of them, is the one that's more likely to end up being a singles champion sometime soon. Yeah, absolutely. Right. No question. Yeah. All right, uh, let's go for one that should be a little bit more difficult. Neither one of them is currently active. That's because they're busy popping babies out into the world. Seth Rollins, Becky Lynch. Ooh, this one's I'll go first with one. Go ahead. Oh, Seth, man. Seth is amazing. Come on. Really? You say in the ring, right? In the ring is it's definitely Seth. Come on now. Yeah, they wasted the last. They they wasted the last six months of Seth Rollins. Uh, I'll take Becky Lynch. Um, what she's done for the for what she's done for the women's revolution. Is fucking more than what Seth's done for the fucking Monday Night Messiah. Let me ask you a question. Are we using the entire platform, everything? Are you talking about what they've done based on the entire resume, or are we going based yes, on sir. in the ring? Use whatever you want. Because Mike, because well, if, he, if he's using the entire resume, then Mike is absolutely correct on that one. Okay. I'll also, so I'll who's also a better in ring talent is definitely Seth Rollins. Without question. See, I don't, I don't agree with that assessment at all. Becky's Becky's gotten fucking main event and five star matches out of people like fucking uh, Charlotte Flair and fucking Ronda Rousey. Seth Rollins Seth Rollins couldn't carry Dominic fucking Mysterio to a fucking three star match. Um, Stop. Dude, Dominic Mysterio is hot trash. He's I mean, awful. I feel like it's not fair to hold against Seth though. I mean, you know, I don't know. The yeah. guy the guy is hot trash. He wore that fucking hot pink sweater fucking on Friday night. He I also told you, Becky. I, I, when you look at the top talent uh, women at WWE across all three brands, like to me, Becky is probably closer to average than to the top. Like, I, I can find five or six better wrestlers, women wrestlers, than her. And I can find eight to ten better wrestlers than Seth Rollins. Really? Yes. You know, I, I'll say this, me personally, um, I feel like both of them have been booked pretty crappily by WWE crappily. as a whole, and they've both been asked to do, like, to make the best out of some really crappy storylines and feuds and even just work with their characters. I think Seth Rollins has had more success working with the crap he's been given than Becky has, because Becky has just mostly felt neutered and kind of boring to me. As she's been booked badly, whereas at least Seth, like, yeah, you've been booked kind of badly, but he still has had some really awesome matches. I've enjoyed his matches with Mysterio, um, the the older one. Um, well, I love the reinventions and, too. Also, he he went through, you know, we. Yeah. I remember last year, I, I came back watching, and I, didn't, like, I was really tired of Seth. I was like, this guy cramming down my throat, and all of a sudden they turned him to heel late in the year, and I I, I loved him. Like. Yeah, I'm a, yeah, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of Seth. Yeah. I, I, I I take Seth over Becky. Right. All right. So the next one, uh, let's let's finally go for one of those. They're not in the same company ones. They're not even. Well, no, wait, none of these have been Big the same, same sex. No. Ew. No. Um, <laughs> this is. I, I want to make them at least a little challenging. Britt Baker and Adam Cole. Oh, come on now. Come on. Come on. I mean, we love Britt, Britt Baker's late. Li- li- uh, you know, this last year, her. As I say, her career-changing uh, heel turn has been great. But come on now, Adam Cole, baby. Come on. What are we doing here? I mean, well, one of them has we're character. Ha- we're, having, we're having a conversation. That's what we're doing here. What the fuck kind of question is that? <laughs> I'm <was laughs> saying so fucking podcast, like, Adam geez. Cole, to me, is – dude, Adam Cole is – I think I know, I know Joe can't stand him much anymore, but Adam Cole – I don't I – don't He's the reason I got like NXT, him. actually. I don't dislike I Adam Cole, but Adam Cole feels like – Adam Cole feels like if you describe to someone what a really good wrestler was and they try to act it out. As would opposed say, to like Would you say that he's an Adam Cole sore? <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Yes. That's... I don't know. I just I think that Britt Baker, now that she has like that character going that she has, is a lot more entertaining to me. Like honestly. I don't know. If, like, Adam Cole feels lost in the shuffle to me right now, and he has ever since he lost the belt because he has no character to speak of. He's low key. Yeah, they're pushing all the guys now. That's why the, you know he he held okay, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. 
when you want to stop making excuses for Adam Cole and you want to make this a real conversation, feel free to come back to it. Until then, no, let's no, be no. real here. I, I, I'm be, confident in my selection, buddy. Buddy, you can be you can be confident, but you're also wrong. Britt no, Baker you're wrong. done. You're gonna go. You're gonna go Britt Baker. Yes, I am. Because you're wrong. Today, you're wrong. No. No, I'm not wrong. I'm not fucking wrong. I, I'm sick and tired of fucking people wanting to sit here and be like, oh, he's a great wrestler. But he says three fucking things on the mic, and they're all the same. That's undisputed. Kyle O'Reilly's a better wrestler than he is and hasn't gotten the fucking shot he deserves because they're too busy worried about fucking putting fucking pippy long stockings with his fucking hair and his boom and all this other bullshit down our throat. He's the Roman Reigns of fucking NXT. At the end of the fucking day, he's like the fifth best wrestler on that fucking roster. If he's fucking lucky, he's the fourth best member of the fucking Undisputed Era in the ring. Give me fucking Bobby Fish in a fucking feud right now. Because I think Bobby Fish would kill it where fucking Adam Cole would say the same three things. He got good matches out of Pat McAfee. At the end of the fucking day, it's because Pat McAfee is an athlete. If he got paired with somebody like Dominic Mysterio, his ass would fucking Mike, suck. I got a question. I got a question. How many fish can buy you buy you fish fry? Uh, Bobby Fish could fry more fish than you could ever eat. So how about we just leave it with Bobby Fish and kick your face off? Hey, fuck you, man. I love fish. We're talking about. All right. Bobby, All right. Bobby Fish, I got... kick your face off. <laughs> All right. I, I got our last couple here, unless you guys have any other. What was your you answer, fucker? Yes. What was your answer, uh, fucker? Oh, me? Britt Baker. You said that. Why aren't you listening? Hey, okay. This you don't want podcast. to podcast. You know why? Open, I get it. Open your ears. She, she, she's a doctor. Okay. Next no, you look. Look. No, I, I hate, I, I hate I'm, dentists. I'm, I hate dentists. I have a dentist phobia. Why would I vote for a dentist? I, because she's listen, better than Adam Cole. That's why. I like Adam Cole. I just liked him better when he was Shawn Michaels. Okay. So anyway, True. moving on. This Good one is thing. our our first same sex couple. I'm really excited for this one. Andrade versus Charlotte Flair. Who do you got? That's fucked up, dude. <laughs> Asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, can I go Ric Flair's daughter? You can go whichever way you want to, buddy. Ric Flair's <laughs> daughter it is. My... Oh, no, I, I do like Andrade a lot. We'll see. I mean, Andrade is only one of the most famous luchadors of all time. No big deal. No big deal. Yeah, nah. Yeah. Not fam. Yeah, I'll take the luchador. Of course you would. Dude, I mean, I, I'm that... sorry. I'm sorry. Charlotte Flair. Charlotte Flair has had, like, three meaningful fucking things that she's done in her career uh beside fucking win like every fucking title it's really been shoved down our throat worse than fucking any of the male fucking rosters ever could be <laughs> and anyone that doesn't think that is living with their fucking head so far from their own ass that they can't okay she's not air. a doctor okay uh, look, not, I'll there's say... nothing to do with that the fact of the matter is is she was fucking she's been mediocre in the ring she's not great in ring she doesn't have great matches she doesn't have great matches with Bailey and Sasha. She has mediocre matches with the two of them. But Bailey and Sasha can have great matches together. Uh, it's because they have great fucking people to work with. Charlotte is not great to work with. She is not above average in ring. She's a mediocre talent. Her dad got her fucking to the fucking jet stream to the company. Go back and watch her first matches in NXT. She was god awful. Wow. She's not you great know? in ring. Okay. <laughs> You know, I was gonna vote for Charlotte, but Mike Loki just convinced me to vote for Andrade. I'm like dead ass serious. Like okay. that was a really good argument right there. Are there more couples besides these five we just mentioned? I mean, there must be. If you guys can think of any, let's throw them out there. I, I said I'd keep it short. The interwebs. Uh, who else is dating? I don't do research. I don't make lists. I don't do research. Come on. He definitely. Uh. That, that dude from fucking Viking Raiders and uh, Sarah, his wife, was the wife Sarah or something? What's the name Sarah, Sarah Logan. Not anymore. Sarah Logan. There you go. She's pregnant, so I think she's, she's preggers. I think we can cross her off the list then. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, I guess we're done. Shout outs. Uh, we like to call those MVPs. Shout sure. it, shout it, shout it out right now. You know what? My shout out goes to Sting. Got two shout outs. Sting. Well, yeah, I, I I didn't mean to mention him in the segment. I was gonna say for this, but whatever. Um, and John Silva. Um, let's see. My MVPs for this week's show will be the two guys that fucking kicked ass uh, in war games. I'll give the shout outs to uh, Kyle O'Reilly and the Bruiserweight Pete Dunne. Yeah, Pete Dunne was awesome tonight. He really was. I'm uh, I'm 
I'm going to cut Pete Dunn from there, even though I do love him. I'm just going to give Kyle O'Reilly all the love right now. I don't know why I can't pronounce this man's name tonight, but Ooh. Kyle O'Reilly is everything. I will always stand by this. I remember watching him and Adam Cole, of all people, steal the show back in like 2010 on the pre-show of a Dragon Gate USA show. And ever since then, I've been a huge fan of both of them. And, I mean, I sound like less of a fan than Adam Cole now than, than I probably still am. I don't dislike him. I just – he's been having the same match for the last 10 years. Whereas Kyle O'Reilly has definitely evolved over the last 10 years, and it's been really, like, really wonderful being a fan of his all this time and following his career. I would love to see him become an NXT champion. Me too, actually. Me too. All right, gentlemen. Push, push the other members of Undisputed Era. <laughs> All right, gentlemen. I guess we'll uh, meet back here a week from tonight. Yeah. Right? Better, Let's start getting some Ritz crackers, so we should probably, like, wrap this up. Okay. Bye. Oh, hey, oh, hey by the way, don't what? forget, what? Uh, end, end of the year votes are going to start soon. Send the list, buddy. How about, how about you guys send me fucking nominees, you dumbasses? Oh. Yeah, you did actually send a um. Yeah, fight me. Yeah, can you send it again? <laughs> I'm like so you, two weeks of fucking. Why? So, why? So you guys can lose it again? No, I'll almost. make sure I save it to my uh to my notes so I can start working on it. If you can, yeah. if you could send me a memo, that would help me actually most. I'll send it via carrier. What is this? Pigeon. What is Office Space now? Is it getting yes. that memo? Fuck. I'll send it via carrier pigeon. All right, I'm eating my crackers now. Good night. Goodbye. Good night. Bye. <laughs> Bye.